This is the most advanced artificial intelligence software in the world. I'm about to embark on a road trip and I'm letting AI dictate every single aspect of this adventure. It will decide where I head each day, the places that I eat, the food that I order, and even the locations that I sleep. I'm making zero decisions myself. Let's see if it's gonna give me a good time or if this is a disaster waiting to happen. Good morning, you sprightly fellows and fellowettes. I am in a good mood today because I do not have to think and it is extremely relaxing. But what I do have to do is pull over quickly so that I can quiz my AI bot to find out what we're actually doing today because right now I do not have a clue. So first things first, I am planning on making zero decisions on this trip. So I need to ask a very important question. Should I breathe? And the answer is yes, you should breathe. Breathing is essential for life as blah, 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 blah. Okay, I will breathe. So now that that is out of the way, we need to figure out what we're doing today. I literally don't have a clue. So let's begin with, I'm going on a three day road trip from Kent in my camper van. Please could you decide where I should go for the first day? And this is exciting. Okay, consider heading to the New Forest National Park. This beautiful area is about a two hour drive from Kent, making it an ideal distance for the first leg of your journey. One thing I have noticed when I was getting into my camper van this morning is that it is not looking too clean on the outside. So I am asking the chatbot if I should get my van washed now or when I return from the road trip. And it turns out I should get it washed now for many reasons. It says clean slate for filming, protect the paint, a better experience. Okay. Siri has spoken. In fact, it's not Siri, is it? What should we call it? I think Claudia. Claudia sounds about right. Okay, Claudia, I shall obey. We are off to get the van washed. I've realized that the new forest is an extremely large area, so I need to get it narrowed down a little bit as to where I'm actually headed. Oh, we're being waved right in. Let's see what the options are for this. Hello mate. Yeah, boss. Yeah, just the outside. Wash and go, yeah? Yeah. 20 pound, yeah? I've asked Claudia, in your opinion, where is the nicest place to visit in the New Forest? She's come back and said, in my opinion, Lindhurst is one of the nicest places to visit, often referred to as the capital of the New Forest. So Lindhurst, if you can hear me, is where we're headed next. I'm feeling rather peckish, so I'm pulling over to get something to eat. I missed the entrance to the main services bit, which I'm kind of gutted about because there was a Burger King in there. But we will make do with the petrol station. There I was, eyeing up a delightful sausage and egg sarnie and then it hit me. I do not have the authority to make these incredibly important decisions on my own. So I've had to come back to the van and I've said to Claudia, I'm on my way to Lindhurst, I'm about an hour away, I've just stopped to get fuel, should I get some food at the services or shall I wait to eat when I get to Lindhurst? And she has said, given that you're only about an hour away, I'd suggest waiting until you get to Lindhurst to eat. That way you can enjoy a proper meal without feeling rushed or too full from eating it on the go. Farewell, sausage and egg sarni. May we meet again someday. I believe we are just about to enter the new forest. You may be able to tell by the cattle grid that surrounds it. So I think we're in Lindhurst. I need to find somewhere to pull over. Oh look. How convenient. I have to say, I do love the new forest. It is extremely new and foresty. Come to think of it, where is the old forest? Eh, who knows. I have arrived in Lindhurst. Where is the best place to get some lunch and what should I order? Okay, so this is sometimes the problem, right? It gives you a list of different options and explains why each option might be good for you. But I refuse to make even the slightest decision. So could you decide for me, please? And Claudia has spoken. Let's go with the Oak Inn for a classic and satisfying meal. Order their fish and chips. It is a quintessential British dish that's sure to be delicious, especially in a traditional pub setting like this. Enjoy your lunch. I say lunch, it is actually 3 p.m. now. There was a bit of traffic and it's just, the day's run away for me. The Oak Inn is apparently eight minutes away. I've no idea what the parking situation's like. Oh, talking of that, I've just had a quick look behind the van here there is what appears to be somewhere I could rock up for the night and stay. There is no parking signs whatsoever. In fact, whilst we're here, 
this says parking down here. Let's see. Oh yeah, it does. So look, no overnight parking. Leave by dusk. But the other bit didn't have any signs like that whatsoever. So I think we may have stumbled across a little secret nest. See, this is what the new forest is all about. Look at that little one. Hello. What is your name? Don't tell Claudia we just did that without her permission. She might throw a fit. Okay, take two. Let's get to the Oak Inn. Are you serving food at the We're moment? We're not, unfortunately. Our kitchen closed at three today. Oh, right. And they don't reopen till six. Till six? Yeah. Okay, not to worry. Brilliant. Now what? Decisions, decisions. In fact, no, no decisions for me. I don't need to make any decisions. Since it's 3.30 and many pubs have limited or paused food service, I recommend heading to the Swan Inn in Lyndhurst. And then a bit further down, she goes on to say, given that you're in the mood for fish and chips, the Swan Inn usually offers a good version of this classic dish. If they do have it on their menu, it is a safe bet. The destination is on your right, the Swan Inn. Arrived. Great work from the uh, police there, dropping their anchors in front of the entrance. Uh, the fish and chips. Anything to drink? Uh, yeah, could I just get like a Coke Zero? Do you Coke do that? Zero, yeah. yeah. Do you want any sauces? Uh, salt and vinegar if you've got it. Although not the very best fish and chips that I've ever had in my life, they were pretty good and one thing is for certain, they definitely beat that sausage and egg sandwich that I nearly had earlier. So it's safe to say Claudia has done good, but talking of Claudia, we need to know what we're supposed to be doing now. I've just let her know that I've finished my late lunch and I'm just looking for something to do for the next couple of hours. And she has said, I recommend taking a leisurely stroll. What? It's raining. Through the new forest, starting at Bolton's Bench. Starting route to Bolton's Bench. It's apparently nine minutes to Bolton's Bench. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I assumed it was going to be a bench. I mean, there might actually be a bench here, but so far, all I can tell is that it is the name of the car park. I mean, to be fair, it is quite a nice car park and there are some quite nice views. I have got no idea though, which direction to head in. Up ahead of me, there seems to be some sort of thing fenced off, so that might be something to do with a bench. If not, there is an actual bench over to the left there, but it does just look like a standard bench. But we will check it out, do not worry. We will get to the bottom of this. So this is the fenced off tree thing. There's no relevance to anything in life whatsoever. For reference, the van is all the way down there. I mean, there is a bench next to a pile of, well, stench. But it does not taste like a Bolton's bench. Let's check this one out down here and just see if this has any clues as to the Bolton-ness. No. Oh, there's a family coming, so I need to do this very subtly before they spot me. That's it! It's a Bolton's bench! She specifically said we need to take a leisurely stroll through the forest, starting at the Bolton's bench. In the context of strolling, what speed would be considered leisurely? Or is it the stroll itself which controls the speed? I really need to do some research. Okay, so the stroll determines the speed. A stroll is considered a slower walking pace, typically less than two miles per hour. Right, so we need to slow ourselves down to two miles per hour. Wait, what is the leisurely bit all about then? Acting or done at leisure, unhurried or relaxed. Okay, so we're in the forest, check. We are strolling, two miles an hour or less, check. Now the leisurely bit, I guess we just go a bit limp. Just, oh, oh, my legs are so soft and whoa! We may have slightly overcommitted to the leisurely aspect of the task at hand, but I think I've nailed it now. It's more of a sort of ripply motion in your limbs, more just flowing like liquid through a valley. Oh, this is it. I've got it. Oh, I've never been more leisurelier in my life. This is the leisureliest anyone has ever leisured. Oh, it's wonderful. Simply. Wonderful. We seem to have emerged from the forest victorious. We've learnt a lot, but right now it is starting to rain a bit more. I'm a little parched, so I need a drink. But more importantly, if we stay in the forest, I fear that somebody may report a very strange man flailing his arms and whispering his way through the woods. My fridge seems to be completely void of all substance, so I've asked Claudia which supermarket I should visit 
and she's informed me that I need to go to the co-op on the high street. Job done, but it's pretty annoying. I found the little Tesco's right opposite the co-op and it probably would have been a better place to go shopping, but Claudia had spoken and that is the final word. So right now I am gonna head back to that secret little park up that I found. It's quite rare actually, because in the new forest, there is nowhere really that you're allowed to just go and park without any restrictions. So that is a genius little find of mine, as long as nobody else has already taken that spot. I've just realized that it's not actually my own decision, is it, to just go and rock up at that place. I need to consult Her Majesty. I'm in my camper van. I need to find somewhere to park so I can sleep for the night. I've found a spot at the side of the road with no parking restrictions. Should I park there or somewhere else? And the results are in. Given the factors involved, I recommend seeking out a nearby campsite. Why? I don't do campsites. I specifically built this van so that I could stay off grid indefinitely. While your current spot may seem convenient, a campsite will provide you with better security, access to necessary facilities and a more comfortable environment, blah, blah, blah. I don't believe it. Okay, so upon looking at Park for Night, the nearest one is here. It's got four and a half stars out of five. It's apparently only nine minutes away, so at least we can just head there before we make any decisions. Well, we can't make any decisions. We have to go. We'll just have to go and see how much of a rip-off it's going to be. No vacancies. Sorry, pitches are not available until after 1 p.m. today. Full. I didn't want to go there anyway. Stupid campsite. Hang on, this one's five out of five stars, and it literally says pure nature i mean that's what i want right the purest of natures uncontaminated nature calling aldridge hill campsite the campsite reception is now closed please leave your name all right let's try one more and then we'll have to let claudia know that her plan might not work and she'll have to reconsider the mailbox of the person you are calling is currently full and cannot accept new messages brilliant well actually it is brilliant it is too late to get a campsite. I've found a nice spot at the side of the road with no restrictions. Is it okay to stay there in my camper van for the night? If you feel confident that the spot is safe and legal, you could likely stay there for the night, but always err on the side of caution and respect local guidelines. Well, I am very confident that it's safe. It's tucked away, it's off the main road. It is legal because there's not a single sign in sight. So I'm allowed. Okay, we are entering. Oh, look. My secret spot is littered with four-legged natures. What a wonderful surprise. I can't believe it. God, they're literally all around this spot. All right, so this here on the left is where we're parking up. We are edging our way onto the secret spot. Extremely subtly, blending in like a chameleon. Okay, we're gonna be nice and quiet so we don't scare them. But look at them go, literally right across the road. They're everywhere. There's another one over to the left there. Oh, look, this one's coming over. Hello, mate. Oh, great. He's making a beeline for me. Is this the end? Is this where I get trampled by my new friends? Right, I'm gonna get back in the van and then I'm just gonna chill out for a little bit and watch them out the whip. Hang on, what the hell is he up to? Well, that's not something you see every day. It's rather peculiar, if you ask me. Hang on, look how close they're getting now. This is like being on safari. Literally, this is the best day ever. Well, I'm just gonna sit here and chill out for a bit and watch the four-legged natures do their thing. Then I'll catch up with you guys shortly when I'm in the back. It is now officially dark outside, and I can say that with full confidence. The reason how I know that it's dark outside is because if we look outside, you can see it is dark. So that clears that one up. I've just been offloading a lot of footage from my several cameras onto the laptop, and I've realized that I've got approximately 4 million-ish hours of editing to do. So I'm gonna crack on with that for the night until bedtime. I don't know if the mic's picking it up, but there is a fresh pitter-patter on the roof. It's just started to rain. Hopefully, it's going to be gone in the morning because we've got a fresh day. I was going to ask Claudia tonight what we're doing in the morning, but I think I'd rather wait and not know until the very last minute. 
So I'm going to whack on a YouTube video. I'm going to get me some sleep and I'll catch you guys when I wake up. I'm in Pokhara and I'm on my way to a village adventure in Mustang. Where have all my friends gone? Humans. I imagine they are to blame for the lack of horses. I think I need to mutter some sort of ancient nature curse in order for them to leave. Nature! Hang on! It's actually working! They're leaving! They're leaving! And don't come back! So good morning. How are we? I'm loving this sunshine. The weather is so much better than it was last night, so I'm very happy about that. I'm just wondering what Claudia has in store for us, but before we go and find out, I am going to enjoy my Jimmy's Iced Coffee Mocha in this beautiful sunny field and soak up the morning energy. It turns out I've got some extremely exciting news for you guys. I have said to Claudia, I've just woken up in my camper van in the New Forest, I'd like to drive somewhere nice today, where should I go? And she has replied with, wait for it, have you waited long enough? She said, I recommend visiting Brown Sea Island. It's a beautiful, peaceful island located in Pool Harbour, not far from Bournemouth. It then goes on to say all about Brown Sea Island, but I don't want to read that bit because I like surprises. But I know where we're heading and it is Brown Sea Island. So, it turns out we're in a bit of a rush now, guys. There's two options to get onto Brown Sea Island. There's one up above and there's one down below. I don't know the names of the places. But the one up above is first come, first serve. You just rock up and try and get on a boat, but it says on busy, sunny, days you might not get a space the other option you book a ticket in advance but the last sailing for that is 12 p.m so i've booked the ticket it was only 20 pounds but we need to get there by 12 it's now half 10 it says it's going to take an hour to get there and also we've got to find out where the hell to park and find the actual ferry dock once we're there would you look at the view we are being greeted with that is amazing literally it does look like i can park all the way along here but we might as well keep driving down a bit further because i don't know how far we have to walk yet all right there's a huge car park over here to the left we might go in here hang on right it looks like we're going in i think what's the time i think it would have been a safer bet to park on the road bit plus then we get a really nice view later on yeah i'm gonna do that I do not like the look of these parking spaces anyway, they're way too small for this magnificent girthy beast. Right, we just got to get to the first space that we see and hope that we don't have too far to walk. Right, let's go here. Right, obviously we don't have much time to show you this view properly, but check that out. I could quite happily do a bit of cooking here, looking out upon the water's edge. But there's no time for that right now, we need to load up this bag with stuff. Get myself a ticket for the van and try to locate the ferry. I don't know what Brown Sea Island is going to be like, but this place was worth it in itself. The water is so clear you can see fish knocking about. In fact, it's so clear that even the boats want to get deeper into it. In fact, that reminds me, look at what I saw the other day. I filmed a little video of it. Someone made a very clear error of judgment when parking their Mercedes Benz. There were signs all over the place saying the road floods, but they obviously ignored it. Anyway, it turns out I parked a lot further away from the dock than I thought. I looked it up on the map. We've got about a 15 minute walk and we've got about 15 minutes before it leaves. So I'm gonna put the camera down and hopefully we're gonna make it there in time. Yeah, I've got a ticket to Brownsea Island. Right, um, over there. Over there, all right, perfect, cheers mate. For a minute there, I thought I was in the wrong place. That says ferries to some other island, but luckily we're right next door. I have made it. I was a bit gutted, I had to walk past a cafe back there. I'm so hungry, but I've loaded up some food in the bag. So if there's nothing to eat on the island, we should be all good. We have landed upon Brown Sea Island. I mean, I'm kind of disappointed. I thought it was gonna be just me on a deserted beach, but there appears to be civilization here. They got toilets, some sort of reception guest area, and they even have their very own cafe. But before we head inside, unfortunately, I need to consult Claudia. 
come on, be good to me, be good to me. I want the cafe. All right, she's defied my wishes. She said, since I'm on Brownsea Island, which is known for its beautiful scenery, I suggest enjoying your sandwich outdoors. Find a lovely spot with a nice view, maybe near the water or in the woods and have a peaceful picnic. To be fair, when she puts it like that, it actually makes a lot of sense. Plus, if I left that sandwich, I'd never end up eating it because once a cheese and pickle sandwich goes warm, it's basically done for. And on the plus side, she said I'm allowed to get a coffee or a dessert in the cafe after I've eaten. Okay, we've got a dilemma. Do we go left or do we go right? Right looks nicer, but left looks more mysterious. Okay. So Claudia has spoken. We are headed left. Although I am starting to regret this. I mean, it seems like it could be some sort of horror film. Oh, that reminds me. I saw another sign when I got on the boat and it basically said something about strong currents. And I was really, really looking forward to these strong currents, but I didn't get to see one, which I was... <gasps> There's one right there. Don't make a noise. You might scare it off. Anyway, back to the task at hand. We need to find a nice little spot for me picnic. Right, it says here, visitor centre is down that way, fair enough. Outdoor centre, 30 minutes. Hang on, there's something up there, 40 minutes away. How big is this island? I thought it was like a speck of land in the vast ocean. After walking through some beautiful woodland for what seems like nine hungry minutes, I seem to have stumbled upon the ocean, which is perfect for my picnic. There doesn't seem to be anyone around this bit, and there is a nice little ledge there where I can see the water and sit down with my legs dangling safely over the cliff. On second thoughts, well, this camera's not going to pick it up, but there's a fair few ants knocking about on the ground. But it doesn't mean I want to sacrifice this view, so I'm just going to stand up and eat me lunch. After much searching, it appears I've achieved my wish. I seem to be alone on a deserted beach. It might not be pure white sand, but right now in this moment, this belongs to me. I gotta give it to Claudia, massive respect to her. Without her, I would not even have known this place existed, let alone visited it. But she has done me extremely proud. I mean, just look at this. Water's so calm that you could literally kick it right in the wave and it wouldn't even raise its voice. So fortunately for me, the boat ticket which I got to come over here also includes the return boat back. You do have to get a specific one when you book in advance and you get about, I think, three and a half hours to explore the island. I've always had this idea that one day I want to get myself a boat. And being somewhere like this just confirms it that I 100% want a boat. Not only do I want to wear a captain's hat, but I just love boats. I mean, look at this, right? Imagine just rocking up here on your boat for the day, on a nice quiet shore, no one about, calm waters, and just relaxing in peace and quiet. So I think that is my new goal in life. I want a boat. I think I've had about half of my allotted time here on this beautiful island, so I'm going to start making my way back so that I can get that coffee. But I'm in no rush. In fact, I feel a bit of a leisurely stroll coming on. Whoa! So I'm back at the van on this beautiful little strip of land, which by the way, I found out the name of if you're interested, it is called Sandbanks. But unfortunately for me, I've had to set up in my office. This time I've gone for the driver's seat office, but these videos do not make themselves. So I'm gonna have to spend the next two or three hours doing a little bit of editing. But there is one thing for sure, and that is that I certainly cannot complain about my view. It seems Claudia has done us proud once again. I asked her what I could do this evening that doesn't involve spending money, and she has suggested a nice sunset walk along the beach. So by the beach, I'm assuming she means this bit here because the actual beach that's over the other side of the road, you wouldn't be able to see the sunset from. But as you can see, it is quite a spectacular sight. So what is my conclusion to all of this? Well. Anyone like myself who's in the creative industry has to be a little bit worried about AI, what it can already achieve in its early stages and what it's going to be able to achieve down the line. There are some definite downsides to it, the amount of jobs that it's gonna take from people, 
And people like Elon Musk, for example, have said that AI is actually the biggest threat to humanity. It's already impressed so many people with the artistic side of what it can do, but it turns out it's not too shabby at planning adventures either. Now, I don't know exactly where it's going to lead to, but what I do know is it's certainly gonna change the world in which we live. It is growing at such a rapid rate. Claudia is for sure an unstoppable force. But right now, there's no time to think of that. I'm actually gonna end this video here because tonight I've got a whole lot more editing to do. And in the morning, I'm pretty much just gonna be driving back home. So it wouldn't be the most interesting thing to film. But as always, I do just wanna say a massive thank you to everyone who's watched this video i really hope you've enjoyed it if you're not already subscribed make sure you hit that button and as for me i'm going to take a little seat on the edge here and watch that sun slip away below the horizon